1999, an Aussie pop song took over the clubs and dance floors right around the world. Don't Call Me Baby shot Madison Avenue to fame, going to number one in the UK and charting in more than 20 countries. Almost two decades on, one half of the iconic duo DJ Andy Van is celebrating the Madison Avenue success for a very special occasion. And DJ Andy Van joins us now live from Melbourne. Andy, great to speak to you this afternoon. When you first formed Madison Avenue with Shane, she wasn't meant to be the singer, right? Yeah, that's absolutely correct, guys. Um, we're in a studio, she laid down the uh, guide vocal and um, We'd love the guide vocal and we thought we'll just send it off to a couple of singers, but the singers didn't pan out and uh, we ended up using the guide vocal on the song, which was like really poorly recorded, but it actually sounded great. So we ended up going with that. Wow, so tell us about the recording. I understand you used quite a cheap microphone, is that right? <laughs> it was the worst microphone. It was an $80 microphone that I just had lying on the desk and we just basically recorded it in a couple of minutes, like really a couple of minutes. Um, doors open in front of the speakers, everything, and uh, bang, we uh, came up with that vocal and put it over the track, and we were like, wow, there's something special here, so we, we stuck with that vocal. Yeah, bang indeed. The song absolutely took off. You really hit the big time. How crazy was it at the height of your fame? Oh, it, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. We had multiple record labels in the UK chasing us. Um, Virgin Records ended up taking us because they had a massive hit with Daft Punk. So we thought, well, that's a pretty good home to go to. So we went, ended up going there uh, with a guy named Andy Thompson who actually signed the Spice Girls. And, um, yeah, so we thought that was a good home and it was phenomenal. It went to number one in the UK. Actually, number two in Australia. Everyone thinks it never went to number one, oh, but no. actually never went to number two in Australia. Who the hell are you went to number one. And, um, yeah, sold a million singles and six trips around the world and it was phenomenal, all in the space of one year. What, 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 what kept you out of the number one spot, do you remember? Um, it was two songs. One song called Blue, you know that song that goes, oh, I'm blue, blue, like the and I'm blue. Blue. Yes. That one. Oh. yes, and there was another track as well, which both of them were frustrating. It was like 16 weeks of battling in the charts. So, Nowhere um, near oh. as good as Don't Call Me Baby. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. That, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was a battle, but hey, we were happy to be number one in the UK and number two in Australia. What about crowds, Andy? What was the biggest crowd you played to? Uh, played to a, uh, a massive event in the UK. It was um, the UK's only ever love parade. And um, I DJed to 300,000 people after flying 24 hours and I can't sleep on planes. So I, I didn't sleep at all. I went straight to this gig in the UK in Leeds and DJed to 300,000 people. Then the next day I flew to Ibiza and did a gig with Armin van Helden. And then the next day flew back to Melbourne. It was bananas. Wow. And my, uh, my eyes were held up, held up by uh, matchsticks. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys only released the one album. Yes. Why was that? Um, basically, we did start a second album, but um, I don't know, our, our, uh, our aims for what Madison Avenue was uh, or, or was to be um, was slightly different. Um, Shane wanted the more commercial approach, which was, you know, more of a Spice Girls type pop artist. And I wanted more of a dance DJ based um, uh, artist. And uh, basically we kind of separated in different directions in, in what we wanted to achieve. So I was super happy, obviously, with what we achieved with the first album and, and the success we had around the world. But yeah, we just sort of parted ways, if you will, um, which was a shame, but uh, you know, you can't always agree on everything, I suppose. Yeah, mm. for sure. Uh, mate, everybody wants to know, how's Shane and do you guys still keep in touch? Uh, we do keep in touch. Maybe once a year we speak to each other and she's doing very, very well, got a family and things like that, as, as I do. Um, yeah, we're both married and children and all those things that happen as you get older. Um, and uh, yeah, we're all doing very well and, and it's, you know, it's a fun ride and uh, at some point it's got to end. But the great thing is people still like it, so I, I suppose that ride's still, still going on. Now, you're playing a Madison Avenue DJ set at Central Station Records' 40th birthday. Uh, Danny Minogue, who I think was one of the originals uh, of Central Station, is yes. going to be performing as well. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it's going to be this 
ginormous gig. Like initially when they booked me, I thought, oh, that's good. It's a, it's going to be a pretty good gig. And then when I saw the lineup with with Danny, with Starley, who's had that number one tra uh, track around the world, Call On Me, um, and like about 25 different DJs from around Australia at home, which is a massive sort of 3,000 person event. Um, it's going to be a really amazing gig in Sydney tomorrow night. Yeah, for sure. Andy, we know you're very busy in the record business and you've signed a lot of bands uh, and you've got some new music coming out. So uh, when that happens, come back and have another chat to us, mate. I shall. I'll come back and knock on your door. I'm your <laughs> Andy Van, you're a legend. See you, mate. Thanks, guys. See you later. Andy Thanks, is Andy. performing this Friday night in Sydney at the Central Station Records 40th anniversary party. All the details are up on our website.